Today is a pretty special day, as five years ago today, on November 10th, 2015, Fallout 4 was released. Fallout 4 is one of those games that has a very, very special place in my heart, as it literally gave me this job. As a young freshman in college, after literally years of making Minecraft videos, I decided to dabble in something different, making a few Fallout 4 speculation videos before release, following release, making some battle videos, pitting some faction against another in a grand scale, and of course, eventually, in the summer following the release of Fallout 4 making modding videos, which kind of leads us to how we got here. Five years later, me now doing YouTube full time, covering mostly Fallout games. So to celebrate the five year anniversary of Fallout 4, a game that holds a very special place in my heart, I want to share with you my five favorite mods. And I actually think this is going to be a fun video series to look back on. I did a similar thing last year, where I showed you my four favorite mods at the time, and this list already has several changes, some from older mods I've revisited and began to love even more, and in particular this time around some new mods only to come out this year, as it has been a massive year for Fallout 4 modding. And compared to many of my other videos, this one is far more subjective, mods I personally love using and find myself consistently going back to. And really with this one, I'd love to hear from you guys down below. I know many of you have shared this journey playing Fallout 4 since release, so for you, what are your top 5 favorite mods, or even just your favorite mods in general? And it's also important to note that these are in no particular order. So starting things off, we have what I would actually think is one of the most slept on mods for Fallout 4, and that is Pack Attack NPC Edition. This really isn't a new mod. It originally came out back in 2018, that being the NPC Edition, but the original Pack Attack came out even a bit before that. At its core, what Pack Attack NPC Edition, or just Pack Attack, will do is make enemies in Fallout 4 smarter. The vast majority of time in Fallout 4, when you encounter a group of enemies, one of two things will happen. Either A, they'll run away because they're passive, or B, more likely, they'll more or less just all run at you one at a time, or perhaps all at once if they're close by, get as close as possible to deal damage, then shoot from a slight distance. Well, Pack Attack NPC is going to really change that in a variety of different ways. And I think one of the big reasons this has become one of my favorite mods is it has continued to get updates and additional features added. So at its core, the fundamental functionality of this one is NPCs will act smarter independently, but also as a group respond to their environment more dynamically. Short of the bat, you'll notice a ton of things like NPCs switching cover. A lot of times in Fallout 4 by default, you'll see this NPC just sitting there shooting you from the same spot endlessly. But one of the first things you'll notice after installing this mod is NPCs will move around a lot more. Let's say you're taking a break to reload, they'll actually switch cover, going from cover point to cover point to try and get different angles on you. Even further, there's an ambush mechanic on this, so NPCs may collectively realize, hey, there's like five to ten of us around, so they'll attack you at the front and at some of these side angles flanking you collectively at the same time. So you may transition quickly from a distance gunfight to being overwhelmed by an NPC attack all at the same time. But where this mod gets even more interesting is if, let's say, that fails. With Pack Attack, the NPCs are going to be evaluating A, you, what kind of equipment you have, but also how many or how strong the allies around them are. So if they start to realize, hey, we just did a charge and half our guys died, they'll start acting a bit differently. You're not just going to have a single file line of the rest of them charging into you most of the time because they realize they're weaker. They'll also act differently if there's a very strong companion around, so let's say they have an Assaultron charging you with high HP, then they might just have that kind of bum rush nature where they all get a little bit more reckless or courageous and are attacking you all at once in the open, not being as tactical or smart. One of the big changes this mod brings to NPCs overall is they're consistently evaluating their environment. As things start to change, they will adjust accordingly and change their behavior as a result. One of the evident ones you will definitely notice is NPCs now will have a self-preservation mechanic. If the situation just seems lost, NPCs will not continue to fight you to the death, but run away, try and live to fight another day. There are also some specific behaviors per NPCs. Some NPCs that typically would just run at you straight on will now be a bit more weary or a bit scared of you if you do have top tier armor or just a very high level. Even further, some things like snipers will now actually stay in place and try and take shots from a crouched position because, you know, that's what snipers do and they have the highest likelihood of hitting you. You can actually make it so certain NPCs can even call in for backup. You can actually add additional NPC spawns for exterior or interior locations. So if you want the game overall to just be a bit tougher, to have some more enemies at you overall, that's a really nice feature of this mod. And even further, there's a raiding party mechanic where let's say you're traversing through some enemy territory. You can make it so NPCs from that territory could set out a scouting or raiding party that might stumble upon you and try and ambush you. And these 
these guys will also act a bit different, typically trying to flank you from multiple positions at the same time or watching a bit from a distance. And the really cool part about all of this is basically every feature with this mod is fully configurable and disableable. It is full mod configuration menu support, so you can even customize how much or the likelihood of some of these things happening. At the end of the day, it's one of those cool mods where you don't really need to know anything about it. You don't have to do anything differently. Install it, maybe make one quick pass on the configuration menu to enable some of the other features that aren't enabled by default, like raiding parties, and then just play the game. And you'll notice pretty quickly NPCs are a lot smarter and the overall experience is a lot more interesting. But then we have one that actually may be somewhat surprising to some of you, and that is the classic holstered weapon system. So though Packatech NPC Edition is this very in-depth elaborate mod that's doing a ton for your game and your encounters in it, the classic holstered weapon system is actually really simple. You see that nice gun in your hand? Now as you holster it, it'll just go on your back. I'm going to be running around with a holstered weapon, or alternatively for certain smaller arms, it'll go on your side. The mod at its core is very, very simple, but I think it actually has this really nice overall effect of making Fallout 4's Commonwealth just look a lot better, basically everywhere. In that, this mod supports basically every weapon mod out there. Literally just download this one file, and from there, holster whatever weapon mod you are using, and it will pop up on your back or your side. It literally just works. But even further, of course, this applies to all of the NPCs in the world. So as long as you're not in power armor, if you see an NPC, whether it be idle or just walking around at a settlement, or even just before combat starts, they will have a weapon on them. And it's one of those cool things that I think has two major consequences for Fallout 4. A practicality standpoint, you now will actually know which weapon an enemy will use against you, which of course is pretty valuable knowledge. But even further, I just think it makes the Commonwealth look a lot cooler, giving all of those NPCs a bit more character, a bit more intrigue. It's relatively simple, but it's one of those newer mods that still feels very fresh and has become a must download and a consistent addition to all of my load orders. I just love having it there in the background. I feel like it just makes everything look a bit better. And also, of course, just how well it works with the support of all of those custom mods and even just as you're running around. It looks really nice to have that weapon sticking to your back basically perfectly. But another mod that may come as a surprise to at least some of you is Sim Settlements Conqueror. And I say this may be a surprise, not because Sim Settlements Conqueror is a bad mod, but really in that, why isn't it the new Sim Settlements 2 or even the base Sim Settlements? Why Conqueror specifically? So before we get into the exact why, it definitely is important to give a bit of an overview because this mod does a lot. Right after that, as you start the game, this will give you the option to have nearly all of the settlements in Fallout 4 be autonomous cities. Using the Sim Settlement Framework, they'll basically act as non-player controlled cities. So as you go to them, they'll have traders, they'll have a ton of civilians, the settlements will naturally recruit additional members as well as upgrade their buildings on their own across the entire game. And that in and of itself is a really cool overhaul or upgrade to Fallout 4's Commonwealth. So many times will you just walk across this farm that's desolate. It's pretty awesome to come across it as something that's somewhat sprawling. I have several people there and it makes it seem like people are actually trying to rebuild. And then to come across it much later and see it be even bigger and better makes it feel like this game is evolving without you really having to do anything. It also features its own quest line. This is where you kind of set up your own gang. You're almost anti-minute men and you have the option to kill Preston and co right off the bat in Fallout 4, which is pretty cool. And although the quest line is definitely really well done, the reason I love this mod so much is the final major feature, and that is you can set up your own settlement and really army or empire. It's basically, after establishing yourself with Conqueror, one of the first things you're going to do is raid one of those pre-built settlements we talked about earlier, taking over a town or city for yourself with the help of a ton of people. And from here, there's a lot you could do with this. From management aspects, placing down specific plot types that will enhance your troops and make them a bit better, or even donating resources to make your troops better, all the mechanics of sim settlements still being relevant, raising an army while at the same time maintaining settlement happiness. But then my favorite part is, from time to time, you can take these troops and either defend that settlement itself, or even raid other settlements and add additional locations to your empire. This is something pretty special in Fallout 4. We have these waves and overwhelming number of weapon mods and combat focused mods in general, but so rarely do you actually get opportunities in Fallout 4 to not only attack or fight a ton of NPCs at one time, but even even further, do it while having a ton of your own NPCs on your side. Very similar to those battle videos I was talking about earlier, this is something pretty cool and unique that I feel like very few other mods offer. And basically no other mods offer this with tangible benefits in that you're actually getting this settlement under
your control in the end. With the icing on the cake really being, you don't have to do this. Oftentimes while playing Conqueror, I find myself playing a bit of Conqueror, getting my city set up and established, then taking a bit of a detour, playing vanilla Fallout 4, doing the quests or trying out some other new mods. But then as I get bored of that and just want to go ravaging in Fallout 4 again, I can return to this at basically any point. It's one of those things that you can be extremely hands-on with or actually give it a bit of a backseat and focus on some other aspects also. It really is a tremendous mod to have in the background and across an entire playthrough definitely makes things a lot more enjoyable. And also something I didn't even really mention, it does give a bit more value and story to the gunner faction in Fallout 4, which is definitely one of the most underutilized factions in the game overall. So another pretty big one that at first glance may just seem underwhelming or simple is see-through scopes. And this mod is phenomenal in that not only has it been around since 2016, and I think for many of us quickly become a fundamental and must-have feature of this game, but even further, it actually just got an update in August of 2020. It's still getting updates for almost five years later. So in Vanilla Fallout 4, the weapon system and combat overall was massively overhauled, and it's pretty great. Definitely could use some more refinement and tweaks in future titles, but for the time being, it is the best Fallout combat has ever looked. I would say one of the biggest and major shortcomings of this is the scope system, as when you use a scope in Fallout 4, it has this weird cut to black transition, and for me, it has just always taken me out of the combat. See-through combat scopes is going to change that. After downloading this mod for basically all of the vanilla weapons that had scope options, you can now craft a scope from two to eight times in zoom that will just work like a scope does in basically every other modern AAA title. The big impact of this is as you're in combat, switching from target to target, or even just kind of zooming in in general, it'll feel a lot more natural. It doesn't have this weird artificial transition that kind of takes you out of it for a moment and you have to re-get your bearings. The most recent update to see through combat scopes has actually added in this really nice addition where you can hold your breath while aiming down sights, especially the more zoomed in ones. This naturally has a cost to AP and you can adjust this. It also features some updates to the scopes overall, but really this has just become a quintessential mod for me. Of course, the beauty of it is it's been available as a framework for so long that many of our favorite weapon mods use this functionality. And I think more so than anything else, that's where I see it on display for myself. And you've seen it numerous times in my videos, me using a scope that isn't the vanilla option, but rather the see-through combat scope option. Just broadly speaking, across an entire playthrough, it makes combat more fun and interesting. If you're somebody who has somehow never downloaded this mod, I highly recommend doing so. I feel like for many, I'm just preaching to the choir because we've been all literally using this mod for years, but if you've somehow slept on this one, definitely give it a shot, or even give the updated version a shot, as it does have several additional features for those vanilla weapons, and I would actually say overall, make some of those vanilla weapons feel a lot more fun to use and interesting to use, like they could actually stand up with some mod options we have nowadays. Before we get into the final of my favorites, I do want to give two honorable mentions, as these are two that are really quintessential for me making videos in Fallout 4. Two mods I've been using for years now, but predominantly get so much use because of me covering so many different mods or starting so many different playthroughs. The first of which is Vogue ENB, literally the only graphical mod I am using 95% of the time. This being a lighting or ENB overhaul for Fallout 4 that I think maintains kind of a natural looking feel, but also adds in some cool features as well as lighting updates, increasing that depth of field and adding in bokeh for certain shots. You'd really see it here when zooming in on a weapon without the ENB, it kind of looks flat. With it, it is hugely upgraded and probably looks pretty familiar to you because this is basically how all of my videos look. Another one that is essential for me is Start Me Up. I am consistently adding and removing mods from my load order, and as such, I have a ton of Fallout 4 save games. I am consistently creating additional and new saves. Start Me Up allows you to bypass that intro sequence, start anywhere on the map, start at any level you want, and really it's just a nice quick access way to get into a game quickly, which oftentimes I am needing to do. But then last but not least, my fifth favorite mod for Fallout 4, and again, these are in no particular order, we do have survival options. This is one I'm sure many of you are familiar with, but I feel like it's another one many people are sleeping on or not taking full advantage of. At its core, survival options is actually really simple. What it'll do is give you a breakdown or really options around all of the different mechanics of Fallout 4 and more specifically the survival mode of Fallout 4. So it could be hunger or thirst, fast travel ability, different debuffs you get as a result of survival, combat options like enemy respawns, or even damage received or dealt, and with this mod, you can toggle or change all of them. And I think this is 
is one of the coolest mods for Fallout 4, and also one of those highly slept on ones just due to the versatility. Take 5-10 to 10 minutes at the start of a playthrough, tweak some of these settings, or perhaps tweak them in extreme ways, and you could have vastly different experiences in Fallout 4. With this one mod alone, I think you could have 2-3 to three playthroughs of the game and it feel totally different. So right off the bat, this all comes from the belief that the true and proper way to experience Fallout 4 is on survival mode. I think it just feels right the vast majority of the time, like the game was meant to be played this way. But you could have experiences that are kind of light survival mode, or maybe hunger and food isn't a nuisance as often, maybe you don't have to sleep ever, and fast traveling is still enabled, because although walking everywhere is nice for the first few hours, after that it does get a bit tedious. My favorite configuration with this one is having many of the survival options enabled, and really turning up damage dealt and received, so I will one shot or two shot most enemies depending on their armor, and they'll do the same to me until I get power armor, but at the same time I can do things like quick saving. This makes it so the game is extremely tense at nearly all points. Any enemy can be a massive threat to you, but I'm not consistently losing progress and I can still save whenever I want to because I feel like that part of survival is just bound to be frustrating at one point or another. Or even just with this mod you could turn other things up to 11, making it so you'd need way more food or water, so you have to sleep more often, making all those mechanics a bit more realistic and a lot tougher. Maybe you don't like bullet spongy enemies, but otherwise you love survival mode. You could change that or configure that with this also. It really is such a versatile and powerful mod. I feel like if you could only have one for Fallout 4, this is probably the mod you should use. Because I would say it's one of those features that adds in more functionality than almost anything else out there. So overall, those are a roundup of my five, or almost in a way, my top seven favorite mods for Fallout 4. Hopefully you guys found this one informative, either A, if you've already used these mods for yourself, or even B, if you've used a older version. And then of course, maybe you just haven't heard of some of these. Maybe you only recently got the game or been sleeping in some of these options. Hopefully in this video, I can provide not only just the typical uses, but even my own personal use and how that could vary from some of the typical uses or why these are great things to have in the background. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. Happy fifth anniversary to Fallout 4. And I hope to see you all next time. Later.